good things certainly do come in small packages. Take Wellington, New Zealand, for example. Wellington may be little, but this diminutive capital city is big on funky cafe culture and beautiful views. Wellington was settled by British settlers in 1839 and named after Arthur Wellesley, the first Duke of Wellington and victor of the Battle of Waterloo. Snuggled between steep, forest-clad hills and a wide sweep of bay looking out to Cook Strait, Wellington spreads out across the slopes, and a sturdy pair of walking shoes benefits visitors who want to explore outside of the central business district. Luckily, the main tourism highlight, the Magnificent Museum of New Zealand, is located near the waterfront and the quaint Wellington cable car provides a scenic and extremely fun alternative to puffing up the hill to the Kelburn lookout. Wellington is the major population center of the southern North Island, and is the administrative center of the Wellington region, which also includes the cities of Porirua, Upper Hutt and Lower Hutt, the Kapiti Coast, and the Wairarapa. It is the world's southernmost capital of a sovereign state. Wellington features a temperate maritime climate, and is the world's windiest city by average wind speed. It is one of New Zealand's chief seaports and serves both domestic and international shipping. Wellington suffered serious damage in a series of earthquakes in 1848 and from another earthquake in 1855. Tourism is a major contributor to the city's economy. Cultural precincts such as Cuba Street and Newtown are renowned for creative innovation, shops, historic character, and food. The city is known for its coffee scene, with now globally common foods and drinks such as the flat white perfected here. Coffee culture in Wellington is vastly overrepresented. The city has more cafes per capita than New York City in the United States, and was pioneered by Italian and Greek immigrants to areas such as Mount Victoria, Island Bay. Due to the city's position, capturing the blustery conditions right on Cook Strait, it has gained the nickname of Windy Wellington. But don't let that put you off. On a blue sky summer's day, there really is no prettier city in New Zealand. To learn more about this exciting travel destination, be sure to watch our video of the top rated tourist attractions in Wellington. Before we get started, make sure you have subscribed our YouTube channel and click the bell button so you don't miss our new upcoming videos. 1. Wellington Cable Car Wellington's historic cable car has been climbing up the hill to the Kelburn Lookout, next door to the Botanic Gardens, since 1912. This fun five-minute journey is a scenic and much more relaxed alternative to puffing your way up Wellington's steep hill from land and key in the waterfront central district. There are excellent views across the city along the way, and keen photographers will definitely want to get snap, happy with the cityscape panoramas laid out before them once at Kelburn Lookout. The Kelburn Cable Car Terminal is also home to the interesting Cable Car Museum, which displays the original cable car used on the tracks. A cable car ride is also one of the top things to do at night in Wellington. Not only do you get the chance to admire the nighttime views over the city below you, but parts of the journey, including the tunnels, are lit up with colorful displays of illuminations. There's also a good cafe located at the top of the cable attraction. 2. Wellington Zoo Wellington Zoo is the oldest zoo in New Zealand. Established in 1906, it's well known for its conservation efforts. If you have little ones in tow, this is an excellent place to see some of New Zealand's wildlife up close, especially shy animals such as the kiwi bird, the country's national emblem, and the tuatara reptile. There are also plenty of well-maintained enclosures for animals from across the world, including the Malayan sun bear, along with giraffes, monkeys, chimpanzees, gibbons, meerkats, and big cats. The zoo's animal hospital, known as the Nest, can be visited to see the work of the zoo's veterinarian staff. Other fun things to do here include daily animal talks, feeding experiences, creature encounters, exploring the adventure playgrounds, and even zoo sleepovers. 3. Cuba Street, Wellington Cuba Street is a prominent city street in Wellington, among the best known and most popular streets in the city. The Cuba Precinct has been labeled Wellington's cultural center and is known for its high per capita art scene the world over. Cuba Street and the surrounding area known as the Cuba Street Precinct, known for its bohemian nature, most scores of cafes, op shops, music venues, restaurants, record shops, bookshops, heritage architecture of various styles, and a general quirkiness that has made it one of the city's most popular tourist destinations. A youth-driven location, the mostly pedestrian Cuba Street is full of shoppers and city dwellers all year round. Contrary to colloquial assumption that the street is named after Cuba, it is actually named after an early New Zealand company settler ship, the Cuba, which arrived in Wellington Harbor on 3 January 1840. 
Many coffee shops and restaurants take this misinterpretation and their stride having names and colors that reference the island nation. 4. Wellington Waterfront Wellington's waterfront area is an attractive district right in the hub of the central city. Both Queen's Wharf and Frank Kitts Park are surrounded by fine buildings, including the Civic Center and the Museum of New Zealand. From Frank Kitts Park, there's a good view of Wellington Harbour, and the park hosts a market every Saturday. There are plenty of cafes and restaurants in this area, so it's a great place for a pit stop while strolling the central city. 5. The Beehive Wellington's most iconic building is the Beehive, site of New Zealand's parliament. Designed by British architect Sir Basil Spence and built between 1964 and 1979, the building with its distinctive shape is the city's most loved or hated piece of architecture. Next door is the more classical-looking building of Parliament House, built in 1907 in neoclassical Edwardian style and home to the chamber where parliamentary debates are held. Free one-hour tours of the Parliament buildings are held daily between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. and trace New Zealand's parliamentary history, as well as touring through the important government rooms. They leave from the visitor center on the ground floor of the Beehive. The Parliament gardens around the buildings are open to the public and contain rose gardens and a statue of Richard John Seddon, who was Prime Minister of New Zealand between 1893 and 1906. 6. Mount Victoria Immediately east of the city center is Mount Victoria, topping out at 196 meters high. This peak offers fantastic views over the cityscape, although it can be extremely windy on top. A narrow winding road, signposted lookout, runs up from Oriental Bay to the Bayan Memorial below the viewing platform. From the terrace on the summit there is a magnificent panorama of the broad city, the harbor, and Cook Strait in one direction, and Kelburn Park with the university buildings in the other. The Bayan Memorial commemorates the American aviator, Richard Bayad, who in 1929 made the first flight over the South Pole from his base in New Zealand. 7. Wellington Harbour Wellington Harbour, also called Port Nicholson, inlet of Cook Strait in Denting Southern North Island, New Zealand. The almost circular harbour measures 7 miles by 6 miles and covers a total of some 31 square miles, at least 60 feet deep over most of its extent. The bay is one of the world's finest natural harbours. Wellington Harbour ranks as one of New Zealand's chief seaports and serves both domestic and international shipping. The port handles approximately 10.5 million tons of cargo on an annual basis, importing petroleum products, motor vehicles, minerals, and exporting meats, wood products, dairy products, wool, and fruit. Many cruise ships also use the port. 8. Wellington Railway Station Wellington Railway Station also known as Bunny Street Station or Wellington Central Station, is the main railway station serving Wellington, New Zealand, and is the southern terminus of the North Island main trunk, where are Upper Line and Johnsonville Line. The station opened in June 1937, replacing the two previous Wellington termini, Lambton and Thorndon. Two companies operate train services from Wellington. Transdev operates the Wellington Suburban Rail Network on behalf of the Greater Wellington Regional Council. This includes the electrified line serving the Wellington and Kapiti urban areas, plus the Wairarapa connection service to Masterton via the Hutt Valley and the Remutaka Tunnel. At off-peak, 8 to 10 trains per hour is Wellington. The Great Journeys of New Zealand Kiwi Rail operates one long-distance service from Wellington off the North Island main trunk. The Capital Connection Service operates to Palmerston North once daily on weekdays. The Northern Explorer Service operated a scheduled passenger service to Auckland Strand three times per week. 9. Matthew Island For nature lovers looking for a secluded getaway close to the city, Matthew Island, also known as Sums Island in Wellington Harbour, offers up a heady dose of wild New Zealand landscapes. During the pre-European era, Matthew Island, the largest of three northern islands in Wellington Harbour, was occupied by Maori. During the modern era, it was used as a quarantine station, internment camp, and military installation until being turned over to New Zealand's Department of Conservation as a nature reserve. For both day trippers and overnighters, the island has a series of short hiking trails up to its highest point, with World War II gun emplacements and around the its perimeter, all with excellent views across to the mainland. Regular daily ferries depart from Queen's Wharf to the island, and a campsite accommodates overnighters.